But then there's other dangers that are not so obvious. <coughs> They're not so obvious. But Paul was able to shake the serpent off, and he shook the creature back into the fire, and although he had been bitten, he suffered no harm. Why? Because Paul was aware of what was going on around him. Right. Even though danger snuck up on him, he had the peace of mind and the awareness and alertness to know that he needed to do something to get that thing off of him. Right. Right, that when danger even snuck up on him, some of us, we're so busy running our mouths. All we're right. so busy, and even when our mouths are running and someone is trying to give us information, our minds are running. So we're filtering there, and they're trying to tell us good stuff that's going to help us in the long run, that's going to help us in ministry, that's going to help us in life, that will help us in relationships. But as they're talking, we're, we're talking. Our minds are just going, and we can't really hear or filter anything or and, and, and hear what God is trying to say through other people uh -huh. because we're always running our mouths. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. I said, can I say shut up in your church? Yes. Okay, say, neighbor, shut up. Shut up. I just have to check. When I was a little girl, some people said that that was a bad word. Uh -huh. Some people rolling up in people's churches saying bad words. Uh -huh. You know, I go back to Bishop like, that girl was saying bad words. <laughs> it won't be me. But some of us, sometimes we need to shut up. So I, I, I just want to say that Paul shook the serpent off. That was the part that really excited me. He shook the creature back into the fire, and he suffered no harm. And so I say that, and, and what I interpreted from that was, oh, man, you know what? There's a scripture that says that you can be in the world, uh -huh. but not of the world. Uh -huh. So did I mention that you can be exposed to hell's messages? All right. You can right. be exposed to messages of sex, drugs, lies, low self-esteem, right. uh, and not be overtaken. You can be exposed to everything that's on television and turn your television off. Oh, and you can be in a room all by yourself and still make a choice that you're not going to do it. There's, there's just space and opportunity, uh -huh. but you make a decision that, that you're not going to do it. Well, you don't have to be overtaken. Uh, and I want to know that, that, oh, and wait, let me not, let's talk about our fans. We were talking about danger. I, I made this decision too. Is that, you know, some people, we call them haters. Mm. I've decided not to call them haters because hate is such a strong word. I'm going to call those people fans. All right. From now on out, I'll call those people fans. You hate on me, you are my fan. Because they're, they're the people that watch your life. And, and, and we're talking about danger. Danger that doesn't always come the way that you think it's going to come. But the people who watch your life and they take bets, right? They update their Facebook status every uh, second well, they, they Photoshop stuff and post well, it all on the internet, right? Well, Place. They gave you a ride home from school oh, every day. They gave you a ride to the mall. Matter of fact, you shared clothes. You shared blazers like when you went to the church conference. All, all those people, your fave, your bestie, your BFF, your ace, the people that you told all your business to. They're the people that end up being the same ones who are sitting back just like the people in Malta and they're wondering and expecting you to fail. Oh. They see what you've been through. They saw the, the viper bite you and they're sitting back saying, Wait a minute. 
Jesus is great power in the whole wide world. You heard somebody say it on the record. I think it was James Hall or something. They said, God is the greatest power in the whole world. And then they go, do it. Has a cow on me. It was something. Y'all know all the Brooklyn people. <laughs> From New York. <laughs> Y'all can laugh. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> but but it's Jesus who said. You know, when we're thinking about, yes, that there's danger lurking. It doesn't always come the way that, that we see it. Sometimes it sneaks up on us and, and, and it'll attack us. Mm -hmm. But but Jesus Christ said, I saw Satan. But you mean like our Savior, our Lord, the one who is, the one who was, the one who will be always, right? He's the one that said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He saw <coughs> Satan fall from heaven like lightning while he was sitting at the right hand of his father. He saw Satan fall, fall from heaven like lightning, which means that he's high above Satan. He's oh, high above oh. every power of this world. He's yes. high above the kingdoms of the world, right? Oh. But then I want to say, come here, Luke. Come here, Luke, and let's tell the story. This got me really, really excited, right? You know, every now and then I get a, a scripture, and then, then when I read the scripture, I just go absolutely ballistic. And like Luke 10, 19 is my scripture for this month. Well, actually, for the last couple of months, it's Luke 10, 19. But I want to call on Luke. Come here, Luke. I said that Luke is here. You know Luke, the gospel writer. Luke, Luke, who wrote his gospel, he was hired to write the gospel by a dude named Theophilus. Theophilus translates to friend of God. <laughs> so he was take, making a record of the gospel for a friend of God. And then Luke was an educated guy. He was he was a, 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 a skilled writer. He was hired to do what he was doing. But, but then Luke in his gospel goes on to say, behold... I give you authority mm. to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, well. and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hey. Come on. Yes. Come on. Behold, yeah. I give you power right. to trample on serpents and scorpions, yeah. and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. I don't know about y'all. Don't look at me like I'm crazy, but there's been some things in my life that right. have tried to hurt me. There's been some things to destroy me. There's been some dangers that the Lord has brought me through. Dangers seen and unseen. And they have utterly tried to destroy me. But when I turn the pages to the gospel according to Luke, in the 10th chapter and the 19th verse, I read the words that nothing shall by any means hurt me. As a matter of fact, I have the upper hand. Because the Lord says that he's given me the power to trample over scorpions and serpents and over all Yeah, I go like, Lord, yeah, I believe that you are my Lord, my Savior. Please you know take me back. Yeah. I'm a work in progress. Right. Yeah. But, but I decided that it's not enough for God to just know my heart. Mm. Right, right? But but there needs to be some fruit of, of what's in my heart. Yeah. So, so if my whole lifestyle just points to something nasty and absolutely discombobulated and retarded and does not reflect and offer God glory. Right? Then it's not enough just to be like, well, God knows my heart. Mm. Yeah. Because out, out of your heart, mm. we should see whatever is in your heart should at some point come out. Oh. Right? Yeah. And so if the, if, if the fruit of your labor is, is confusion, the fruit of your labor is hurting people, then guess what? Stop saying God knows your heart. We all know your heart. We see it in the fruit that you bear. Well. So I'm well. tired of sometimes he's saying, and I pray, God, 
it, let me be the first partaker of being, making sure that I'm not a sometime be saint. Right. I, I want my words to be seasoned. I, I, I want people to experience your love everywhere that I am. Not just when I'm behind the pulpit or when I go out on a preaching engagement. But how about when I'm out with my friends? Right. When I'm out at leisure time, when I'm out celebrating my 30th birthday. 